Well, fissures used to occur throughout all of North America, throughout boreal and temporal forests. They were trapped to extinction in a lot of their range. Around 1998, Washington State started the process of doing a status review looking at what is going on with the fisher population and they concluded that they weren't enlisting the state endangered species list and probably the only way to recover them in the state was through a reintroduction. So that started this 10-year compliance journey where partners came in and did environmental assessments to figure out can they come back and if so where and what would be the impacts and it all kind of coalesced at the best habitat to bring back fishers to Washington State. It was here in Olympic National Park. Um, we s f released our first animals in uh, January 2008, and then released the last animal in uh, February 2010. We released a total of 90 over three years. So this is what the ground method we use for tracking fishers. We put a radio collar on and then when we bring them down we have a way of finding out where they go. The strongest signal you get is right off the end of this and then as you get off to the sides it'll, it'll die out. You won't get as loud a signal. So you more or less walk along as a directional thing and wherever it's strongest you go in that direction. So we you know, when she first started denning at that site, we were pretty concerned because it's not typical fisher denning habitat. It's way too open. And especially when we go in and check the den site, we'd see coyotes, which are known fisher predators. And then looking at the, the film on the automatic camera, you could see where a bobcat had visited the site. So we were pretty nervous about it. So we went looking for her. So just driving around that area, listening for a radio signal, and did pick her up about a half an hour later on mortality mode. So immediately, you know, we knew that she had a den, we knew that she had been there within three days, thought, well, maybe these kits are still alive. We got a hold of Scott Horton of the DNR. He climbed the tree. We weren't sure if there were even kits left in it originally. Uh, and then as Scott was climbing, there was a big piece of loose bark that he pulled off, and one of the kits gave this loud kind of a scream at him. And uh, we knew there was at least one, but we still didn't know what cavity. Um, finally, at some point, um, Another little piece of cavity broke off and they popped out and there was two kits there that we could see. The plan is to release them in October. Northwest Trek, which is a game park uh, near Mount Rainier, they had graciously agreed to raise them for us um, with minimal human contact because our goal is to reintroduce them into the wild. It's kind of like even though their mom, F88, did not make it, she had unique genotypes. These kids have genes not only from her, but also their father who was up in BC. So it is critical if we, you know, to try to make that effort to get those genes back in the population with these two males. Because we're getting such, you know, outreach in the paper. It's just really been fun. Um, this project has brought a lot of people together and we're all working together on it. And, it's been really rewarding, not just bringing, restoring this ecosystem and bringing this animal back, but also bringing all these people together, working on a common goal.